So our case is a 16-year-old boy who had what was called a convulsion while eating lunch at school, and he flung his soda into the air immediately before going into the convulsion. He had sudden loss of consciousness and was reported to be stiff and then shaking, foaming at the mouth, and he had wet himself during this time. They estimated that it lasted a minute or two and he was sleepy and confused afterwards and was taken to an emergency room where he was evaluated and released. The history is otherwise unremarkable. He had normal developmental milestones, no known neurological risk factors for epilepsy, negative family history. There is a story of being sensitive to bright lights and video games. He was seen by a neurologist in consultation who did an examination and that and blood tests and MRI scan were unremarkable. However, he had an EEG and in the interventional state, he had four hertz to five hertz generalized spike and polyspike in wave bursts and a photoparaxysmal response at flash rates of 12, 14, 16, and 18 hertz. This was a self-limited response, not sustained. Two months after this first seizure, we'll call it what it was, he had a second one and his teachers reported also that he's occasionally staring into space in class. He was diagnosed with generalized tonic-clonic seizures and begun on treatment with levetiracetam, 500 milligrams twice daily. Shortly after starting therapy, he experienced fatigue and dizziness, and two weeks in, his family noticed that he was fairly aggressive and irritable, and this was reported as well at school, though worse at home. So what are our initial impressions of this story? We have a teenager in his mid-teens who reports some sensitivity to bright lights and video games, which my experience is not worth very much, to be honest, uh, but clearly has had two tonic-clonic seizures without warning, and he has an EEG that shows four to five hertz spike and polyspike and wave discharges and a photopaxism response. The EEG would be indicative of an idiopathic, presumably genetic generalized epilepsy, uh, both in the generalized spike, spike wave burst the EEG which is highly consistent with an idiopathic, likely uh, genetic, generalized epilepsy uh, in both the spike wave burst and the photoparaxismal response. So I think we have a pretty clear diagnosis of epilepsy. In fact, after one seizure, uh, the probability of recurrence is probably at 60% or so given the EEG findings, and he could have been diagnosed with epilepsy. Certainly after the second, he could clearly be diagnosed with epilepsy and treatment is warranted. Arguably, you don't know when that second seizure is going to occur. Will it happen two months later as it happened here? Will it happen 20 years later or 10 years or five years later? So many would justify waiting before treating to see what the natural history of the epilepsy is before treating. And most recently this week, in fact, I saw a patient in the office who has uh, seizures but has two siblings also with seizures, both of whom had a single tonic-clonic seizure and nothing more with spike waves, so it's not a guarantee of a second seizure. His side effects are classic side effects of levetiracetam, the aggressive behavior, the irritability, and fatigue and dizziness can be from anything. So I think with these side effects, it's worthwhile changing his medication.